All right, what's cracking with y'all? It's your boy Prince the Hustle Guy, aka Wise the Warlock, and we reaching, reaching, reaching in our combat tool bag one more again. It's a cool black affair. Shout out to the mighty, mighty LDBC, LDBC only, LDBC everywhere. So, I want to try to make break down the six degrees of separation in boxing um, using some well known. Uh, middleweights or super middleweights uh at this time <clears throat> or at that time um and try to be as as least confusing as possible all right so sadly and i will say sadly but at this time um tarver would have been the man and why <clears throat> again this is to break down six degrees of separation and why it doesn't work or why it can't exist in boxing. Um, Tarver and mainly timing. Timing is timing and time is the key factor in all of this. Um, So Tarver beat Roy Jones and broke everyone's heart in boxing. No one really liked um, Antonio Tarver. Um, but at that time, he talked himself into a position that was against undeniably one of the uh, greatest to ever set foot in the ring, um, Roy Jones. Roy Jones, at this time, had already beat Bernard Hopkins, um, had already beat Nigel Benn. Now, um, Bernard Hopkins hadn't beat um, G-Man Gerald McClellan. Now, that's five fighters already. I, d- I didn't want to introduce a sixth. I thought it would be cool for a six degrees of separation and six fighters, but fuck that. We're just going to stick with the five for simplicity's sake. But G-Man, <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken, beat uh, Roy Jones and the amateurs, and G-Man wanted that fight bad, and G man Gerald McClellan beat um, one of the greatest punchers, one of my favorite punchers, um, Julian, uh, the Hawk Jackson, um, JJ. Uh, I guess that'll be the fifth. He beat him, and that made him a superstar in in the eyes of. I mean, he was already a star, but that fight and the result of that fight set him apart and into another class in his division. Um, but that's just to show you, to, to, to give a little background about uh, G-Man. But G-Man wanted Roy Jones, and that was a fight Roy Jones refused adamantly. And granted, um, Tarver beat Roy Jones in the amateurs and uh, wanted to prove to the world he can do that as a as a pro. And Roy... Um, couldn't take the public disrespect and we all know what happened in um, both fights against Tarver with Roy Um, but sliding back before Tarver beat Roy again um, well uh, I I, I have to I was going to introduce the uh, Bernard Hopkins beating Tarver part but let's go back to Gerald McClellan so Gerald McClellan um, fought Nigel Benn after um, being, beating, uh, Julian, uh, I keep wanting to say my man J-Rock, but Julian Jackson, um, he fought Nigel Benn, um, the Dark Destroyer, and he was a touted puncher, but everyone really had G-Man going in and destroying him because no one really thought Nigel Benn, um, could be uh, Julian Jackson, but uh, there were headbutts in that fight, and I believe that was the what did it. But um, the after that fight, G Man was never the same. He had a uh, brain damage that he could not recover from, and is still trying to recover from to this day. Um, but that prevented um, the Roy Jones fight from ever happening. And I introduced G-Man as a very important person because I felt uh, 
though no one wanted Tarver to be the man at the time we're talking about when Tarver was the man, G-Man, um, though this is well after, his, this would have been after his prime, he would have still, um, he would have been the man. I've, I feel like if he would have had the opportunity to fight Roy Jones, um, and that fight was signed, sealed, and delivered, it would have been one of the greatest fights ever, but I think because of Roy's lack of confidence against him, we we would have seen uh, Roy's true kryptonite in in the form of something other than Tarver. But um, so moving on back to um, sliding back to just before, I mean yeah, just before no, af- just after, um, not long after. Uh, well, let's just put it simply: Bernard Hopkins, who lost to Roy Jones, um, beat. Antonio Tarver, and um, that was a, a loss Tarver couldn't couldn't change in any way. Um, he decisively lost to um, Bernard Hopkins. Um, to my belief, Bernard Hopkins and Nigel Nigel Ben never uh, fought. I don't think uh, Nigel Ben truly really recovered from the uh, Roy Jones loss. I don't think he garnered any more. Uh, great names uh, or great wins after that. He he may have got some knockouts after that if he continued, um, but I, I don't think he garnered any more great names. But this is essentially why the six degrees of separation doesn't work in boxing because if we say um, if we take away time and say who's the man in this, we can't say because Tarver beat Roy Jones, but Tarver lost to B Hop. Roy Jones never fought G-Man, um, but G-Man lost to Nigel Ben. Now, granted, Nigel Ben lost to Roy Jones, but Roy Jones ducked G-Man. So we can't automatically say Roy Jones would have beat G-Man, especially if, in most of our belief, looking back on Gerald McClellan's fights, I think most of us know Gerald McClellan could beat Tarver. So that said, this would the six degrees of separation in boxing and why it does not work. I try to be as least confusing as possible, but I may have just confused you even more. But look at the um, the state of those uh, middleweights and super middleweights at that time and, and just see, though Roy was dominant, look at um, just before that and look at Julian Jackson and Gerald McClellan. Look at Nigel Benton. Look at the surrounding... Uh, landscape outside of Roy Jones. Um, shout out to the mighty LDBC, LDBC only, LDBC everywhere. Check out the Simple Truth Network, um, Black Gents Grooming Company, uh, TrillTalk.net, LDBC.com, everything LDBC. Um, Till next time, guys. Deuces.